what's happening in Auburn Athletics with your host, Andy Graham, Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee, War Eagle. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the latest edition of the Auburn Blitz. Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee, here with you on this Tuesday, and glad that you joined us out there wherever it is that you might be watching or listening to us. Our program is brought to you by Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Stores, Mortgage Pro, the Eric McKinley team, and Big Fish Real Estate Group at Lake Martin. Couldn't ask for better partners. Really couldn't. I know we say that all the time, but it's the truth. Uh, three great companies and uh, a lot of great leadership in those companies, and that's why they do well. We talk about leadership on this program a lot, and uh, there's three really good examples of that. You can call us, 256-234-6221, to be part of the Auburn Blitz. And you can comment away on Facebook Live. Uh, you can go to Sports Blitz Live at Sports with a Z, and uh, you can comment away and uh, talk about anything you want to, ask questions, whatever. And um, we'll start the program, uh, Randy, uh, as you and I, this is our day on the show every week. And uh, uh, we get to kind of catch up on, on last week and events from the weekend and kind of set the stage for what's coming. Uh, we do know high school football starts next Thursday night around the state of Alabama in several different places. And uh, I know people are excited about that. We'll get football back. And then a few weeks later, we'll have Auburn and Alabama football and SEC football and all this talk that we do uh, will be relegated to breaking down games and getting ready for next week and all that. It's a fun time. It goes by very fast, but um, uh, we will start with some somber news. Uh, over the weekend, uh, Bobby Bowden passed away, uh, 91 years old, the longtime Florida State football coach. It really took them uh, to prominence, took that program uh, from mediocre at best and everybody's homecoming game to a powerhouse uh, in, in college football. We'll talk about some former games between Bobby Bowden and Auburn, and uh, Auburn got the better of him at the beginning, and then uh, he was able to get some wins against Auburn um, in the later years, and um, it was a great rivalry overall. And then, of course, one of our favorites, mine and yours, uh, Auburn former Auburn linebacker Craig Ogletree, uh, a guy you and I grew up watching. Uh, passes away from COVID implications. Uh, much, much too young, though, um, at 53 years old. Yeah, you know, it's uh, as you start with those two um, totally different situations. I'll start with Craig. And um, 53, way too young. COVID is – it's here. And it's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. And it seems like the cases are going up and it's a scary time. And I've been in that conversation – with umpteen people this morning already. And um, and it's not around athletics, it's around business and business ownership and running of businesses and How employing out, people. Man. And what, do you, what are our plans if uh, something were to happen in schools? And I know none of us want to hear this again, but, but it's hard to, to not be. And you brought up high school football. You know, I remember back to last year and the decisions that came down from the Alabama High School Athletic Association and some other athletic associations around the country and their willingness to put kids out there and put fans in stands, even though it was at a, a minimum capacity, but there were still people there to watch ball games and um, to try to social distance. And I felt like that's how we got a college season under our belt. If it weren't for the high school showing their willingness to go out there and do that. It felt like the media and the pundits that were concerned about what the decision would be last year um, at least silented somewhat. And then the SEC made the decision they were going to go on and all the it means more yeah. and um, has really come, come to the forefront again this year with all the news uh, that's come down. But back to you, Brett, on the high school ranks, it, it – Feels like it's uh, at a perfect time. Can't get back out there soon enough and get some type of semblance of reality to hit back in because uh, there's a, a lot of somber news out there. Yeah, there is. Uh, I'm excited uh, on a personal note. I've, I've said that several times uh, leading up to this year. Uh, you'll be in my shoes one day very soon. Uh, you'll blink and, uh, and it'll be your turn. But uh, to have a, have a son or have a child, a daughter, son, whatever, that, that gets to their senior year in high school. And all you want to do is 
for them to have the most normal, best experience of their educational career to that point, it's their senior year. We all remember our senior year, and uh, you know, you 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 go to school your whole life waiting on that year and all that comes with that and being a senior and. You know, I still feel sorry for those kids last year uh, that didn't get to really experience uh, uh, a normal senior year. Things that were previous to 2020 and, uh, you know, the class before them, uh, that, that spring uh, around March, they had pretty much gotten through most of their senior year, but spring sports were cut short. And so a lot of those kids experienced a little bit of it because their career ended a little bit sooner than than they were expecting, and uh, for a lot of those kids, both on the girls and the boys side, that was the last athletic, um, you know, experience they'll have in their life. You know, as far as a a, a team sport or whatever. So um, we're hoping and praying that 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 we learn as a society how to live with this virus because that's what we've got to do. It's not going anywhere. It's not ever going away. It's going to mutate. There's going to be variants of it. Uh, but we've got to learn, and I think that's another thing that people don't understand, that even the, the medical doctors out there are learning as we go. They, nobody has the answers to all this stuff, and everybody's just trying to do what they feel like is the best and, and the right thing. But going back, uh, excited for high school football, high school athletics as a whole, kids getting back to school this week and next week and um, trying, trying to be as normal as possible. I mean, Craig Ogletree, um, you know, I did not realize this, but he was a pastor, and he was, he was the one that uh, really led the funeral for Pat Dye, was one right. of the lead ministers uh, for that funeral. And um, so just a, a tough situation, one of the best defensive ends, really back in the 80s when – those Auburn defenses well, were as good as advertised. Um, we'll never have defenses in this country back to the level that we had back then because the game's changed so much. Yeah. You're just – you're never going to look up and uh, your team's only allowing seven or eight points a game. It will not happen again. Uh, but Craig Ogletree was really one of the ones that – uh, really cemented the defensive end position for Auburn. You had Andre Bruce before. Right. Um, and since then, you've had Quentin Groves and Stanley McGlover, and I can keep going down the list of guys that really are premier pass rushers coming off the edge. And um, But Craig Ogletree, during that last year that he was at, with Auburn, he was special. And uh, he was not a big, heavy guy. He was more of a – in my mental, he was a 225, 230-pound defensive end, but played physical and was really quick off the edge. Yeah, just to kind of remember him a little bit here in this first segment, uh, you know, everybody called him Tree, and he was part of three consecutive SEC championship teams there in the late 80s. Um, uh, our good friend uh, Quentin Riggins, I've been friends with Quentin a long time, and really the guy that I, I really grew up admiring and, you know, teammates with each other. And, you know, Craig Ogletree and Quentin Riggins uh, uh, were really strong friends at Auburn. And uh, Quentin came on to say, he said he was just a great leader, great linebacker. Um, what most people don't know is that he was also an excellent student, a brilliant person, a great dad, husband. We just clicked. He was a very special person to me. Um, Quentin uh, went on to talk about his uh, – his accolades had over 114 tackles and 12 sacks uh, to lead the team in that 1980 as a senior in 1989, um, but just was probably more talked about as a class act as he did as his accolades were on the field. So you know we all will have a legacy one day. We'll all be remembered uh, on this on this earth when we all pass, uh, and. I'll, Tackles and stats and all are great, but you know what kind of impact did you have, you know, on on your brother and sister and and your fellow man and and, and you know people you work with and uh, people you come in contact with and you know this coach Witt comes on to say, uh, you know Joe Witt was was his coach down there and uh, had nothing but great things to say. He said he's one of the finest players I've ever been around. His character was impeccable. When he came back and visited, he would come over to the house and bring his children. He was a special person. He was the most. He wasn't the most talented guy. I coached athletically, but from football knowledge, dependability, no problem kind of guy, there were none 
better than him, he was a special guy. Well, he was what we talked about the last time you and I were on air together. Uh, in the day of the transfer portal, I'm not sure that Craig Ogletree is still at Auburn University to have that great final season that he had because he wasn't one that made his way out on the field in immediate impact as soon as he was on campus. But he waited his turn. He did. And he waited his turn behind – some of the best football players Auburn's ever had on the defensive side. And when his turn came around, it was next man up. Um, he really was as good, if not better, than the ones that had played before him in that final season. So, no, the stats aren't going to show uh, a career full of 350 tackles like Tracy Rockers may or 20-plus sacks and X amount of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. You may not see that there, but any of us that – were true fans back then, 12, 13 years old okay. like you and I were. We knew what we were seeing, and we knew that he was special that last year. Yeah, no doubt. He was a, he was a staple on that side of the ball for Auburn. And, and Pat Dye, and, you know, again, uh, nothing but great words of, of, you know, whatever it is. Anybody out there that, that had something to say about Craig Ogletree, just nothing but overwhelmingly positive and how much he impacted the people that he was around. And that really is what counts in this life, not how many tackles you had on a football field. But, uh, but Bobby Bowden, too, as well, and we'll talk a little bit more about him. Uh, Bobby Bowden uh, really taking over a program at Florida State that you know people scheduled as a homecoming game and really turned them into a powerhouse. And when the ACC uh, conference was formed and, he, and Florida State went to the ACC, um, really dominated that, that conference while he was at Florida State. In our lifetime, I don't think anyone denied that he's a top five coach in our lifetime. Oh, no doubt. And uh, maybe we can talk about that when we come back. Yeah. Who are, who do you consider the Mount Rushmore of coaches in our lifetime? Let's just say in the last 50 years. Yeah. Be a good talk. It will be. Uh, up against the break, stay tuned. More the Auburn Blitz right after this. Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Hidley Towers is an affordable senior citizen community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East, where spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living, where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more about Alexander City's best kept secret, 256 329 0552, for your family at Hidley Towers. That's 256 329 0552. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA weekly show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritons, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last, Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. Com. Heritage South Credit Union in Alexander City is your community credit union, and they have been for over 80 years. Heritage South Credit Union proudly serves Tallapoosa, Coosa, Lee, Chambers, Randolph, and Chilton Counties. 
From checking to business accounts, to share savings to club accounts, to their kids' club and investments, visit them online at myhscu.com. Heritage South Credit Union, your community credit union for 80 years, federally insured by NCUA. A&M Plumbing, A&M Plumbing, service at its best when you need it most. From the smallest drippy faucet to drain cleaning to water heater replacement to gas lines to total systems replacement, AM Plumbing handles it all. Visit amplumbing.net today for the experienced, licensed, and insured pros at AM Plumbing. AM Plumbing, AM Plumbing, service at its best when you need it most. Gills Auto Sales in Opelika has 250 pre-owned and low-mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, each with low down payments and low monthly payments. Good credit or bad credit, it doesn't matter. Get pre-approved in seconds with no effect on your credit score. Instant decision with no date of birth or social security number needed. The largest selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs can be found at Gills Auto Sales, 1430 Gateway Drive in Opelika, or at gillsonline.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee here with you, uh, carrying you through your lunch hour. Uh, we'll shift over. If you got some comments or questions uh, uh, you want to add in about Craig Ogletree or Bobby Bowden, we'll leave that open for the entire show, uh, and we'll kind of uh, reflect on some of those throughout the show. Uh, I want to shift over uh, because Auburn in fall camp now, uh, making some strides, and an article came out on 24-7 uh, this past um, – uh, yesterday or, or day before, uh, Mark Murphy, uh, someone's been on our program uh, several times, and uh, you know works for Jason Caldwell and uh, Jason on with us weekly here on the program. But just talking about interviewed Derek Mason and talked about this linebacking core, Randy, uh, for Auburn, and, and and really I wanted to talk about our linebackers last week, and um, it's, it's kind of fitting. This article came out. I did not realize that Kobe McLean led the country in tackles last year. I mean, that guy, we knew he was a tackling machine, but um, he led, He led obviously, Auburn with 111 tackles uh, this past season. But um, Owen Pepo was right behind him with 93. Um, Auburn gets Chandler Wooten back, who opted out last year because of COVID. And uh, Derek Mason seems to be very high on Cam Riley, who was a freshman last year. Didn't see the field hardly at all, but he's 6'5", 220. Uh, you and I were talking off the air about Auburn and – maybe missing on linebackers in the last 20 years. And, and really, that's a position in the, in the SEC, if you don't normally have a stud, you're at a deficiency on defense. And we've seen Auburn's defense, uh, you know, in the last 10 years before Kevin Steele really struggle. Kevin Steele kind of turned things around. And, you know, we got guys like Deshaun Davis and some guys that played above their head. Uh, so to say, and, and and had some great accolades. But as far as top first, second, or third round draft picks in the NFL, Auburn has not pushed those out. But uh, you got two guys returning. Uh, Owen Papo with 93 uh, tackles, 56 solo of those 93. And then uh, Zacoby McLean, who just seems to be all over the field uh, with 111 tackles. You get both of those guys back, plus you get to add some of these other guys like Cam Riley and then a Chandler Wooten back into the mix. I think the biggest thing for Auburn, though, is the, the need for those two guys to not have to make as many tackles as they made right. last year. And the reason, if you're a linebacker, that you make those numbers of tackles is because your defensive front's not making plays behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage. And I, when you've got – when you reel off in today's game, 200-plus tackles between the two of them, when's the last time that happened at all? I don't remember it. And probably Deshaun a good – Davis, did he have anybody with him that would have assisted in K.J. Britt? Yeah, I mean, he and Deshaun Davis probably were. But close. the defensive front was so good was. during that stretch that you were going to get 40 to 45 tackles from Brown, 40 to 45 tackles from Marlon Davidson. I'd be willing to bet without even looking at the stat totals from our defensive linemen last year, we didn't have a single defensive lineman have over 30 tackles. 
Is that fair? I don't think so. Well, that's that's the issue. So it's not, you know, I feel real good about what we've got here, but right. Auburn has to step up the game on the defensive front and be able to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. And um, But it is an enigma with Auburn over the last 20 years because back to those 80s teams and back to those 90s teams, you never worried about Auburn getting a bull at linebacker. Never worried about Auburn getting somebody that – the NFL really wanted, you know, a Takeo Spikes type. Yeah. Um, players like that that we have had right. at Auburn. Um, we haven't had it. Yeah. I would guess the last true top three three round pick that we've had in the NFL at linebacker is Carlos Dansby. Carlos Dansby, yeah. That's a long time ago yeah. now. Josh right. Bynes has had a good career. Yeah, yeah, yes. But he was never one in college where you go, well, he's also, a, a top now, three it, round. And, and that thing about Josh Bynes, if it hadn't been for him and Nick Fairley, uh, that defense, I mean, it was already very porous. It was good enough to help Auburn win a national championship, but they just had no pieces to go with it. Uh, Josh Bynes w did way more than his part trying to solidify. I do have some comments coming in. Yeah, I did get a text that said uh, J.J. Pegues moving over to the defensive side of the ball. On that defensive front, there's a lot of people excited yep. about maybe what he's going to bring to the table because you know he's athletic. He already showed how quick he is for his size. That could translate to be really good on the defensive front. Yeah, I mean, you and I do a lot of ball games together, and we we've been broadcasting together for close to twenty years. And there's no position that I can tell a lot about quicker than I can if you've got a motor on a defensive line. And I hate to watch these beautiful guys get off the bus first and come out there. And Byron and I've been doing three quarters of football with you, and I ain't called their name. And that tends to compound on top of one another. It when does. you don't play well in particular games and you just decide you're going to turn it over in other games, defensive front doesn't really work that way. The Nick Fairleys of the world, right. they make plays. and It doesn't the, matter how, how many people, do, you know, they get double teamed, they get chopped or whatever, they just seem to always make time. And who knows if J.J. is that type of player, but I know his skill set is that type of right. player. Very nimble feet can move, hopefully can get in the backfield and cause some disruption. Um, something that we haven't had as move. much of, you know. Maybe a good move for him. You know, Derek Brown had his moments, but I think we all really knew he was a plug more than he was right. somebody that was going to be back there on top of the quarterback, right. snap on top of snap. We Derek, haven't had one of those guys. No, we haven't. We, we really haven't. Got a, a few comments. Uh, Jim says, the new NIL deal – Ohio State freshman Jack Sawyer, five-star freshman, receives a full-loaded Chevrolet Silverado courtesy of Mark Wahlberg. Mark said, there's more coming their way soon. Guys, does this trend, uh, does this trend continue? Yes. Freshmen continue to get big deals without ever taking a snap. Uh, this is the wild, wild west. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's going to keep going. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, and what that's going to tell you is the value that those – young men bring to their university so we can throw darts at them and say we don't like it and we don't want it but how valuable are some of these key guys to this university and to the marketing and to the brand i mean keep going down the list what's tank bigsby's worth to auburn university right now Probably a lot when he gets on the field out there this year and in, in this new nil i mean it's well i think we already know what his well, worth we do, is we know what his worth is but man you know, from what we're hearing in camp and how much different he even looks from last year, I mean, he's he knows, and I think Auburn knows they may have the best back. And, and looking across the state at Bryce Young, at quarterback, we already know about Bo Nix. We've got our third year with him, but Bryce Young, number one quarterback coming out of high school. Right. Yeah, he's only thrown 22 passes, but he's the number one quarterback coming out of high school right. about to start for the defending national this champion. This really ain't even about when kids get to college. This is them coming out highly – recruited highly ranked by these recruiting services. when you know what, that's right when like you know. tank bigsby it took about three snaps last year where we go oh well, okay we got one there no yeah problem. everything that we read was true <laughs> you know and we know sometimes you go like byron coward like what is it Did, yeah does he know how to make a tackle dean says and i'll say this we'll come back and read the rest of it regarding COVID and athletics 
try to do what is best for all involved, especially the student athletes, based on the best medical advice information provided. Is when politics gets involved, it makes it very difficult. Brett, you are right. Medical professionals are learning more and more daily. We see things changing hourly. We hear uh, all the time. It only seriously affects a small percentage of this age group. A small percentage still means it affects some. And one is too many. It is almost a no-win situation for those of us making decisions. We'll come back. More to come right here on the Auburn Blitz. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. Grain and Leaf, located at 6068 Highway 63 South, is Lake Martin's premier boutique-style bottle shop with a unique array of sophistication for everyone. Appropriately named for its exclusive selection of top spirits, wine, and craft beer, Grain and Leaf also has a number of fine cigars for you to choose from. They also carry the full line of Hornsby Farms assorted jellies and pottery. Open 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday and noon to 5 on Sundays, Grain and Leaf is your premier shop in the Lake Martin area. First time since 2007, both the purchase market and the refinance market are extremely strong. While most lenders' turn times have slowed down, we are closing mortgage loans in less than 15 days. At Mortgage Pro, we have closed record numbers in 2019 due to great rates, property values increasing, and exceptional service. If you're looking to buy a home or refinance your current home, call Mortgage Pro today. Mortgage Pro is it's the way to go. Frontline Outfitters provides all your aftermarket parts for your cars, trucks, and as well as your professional tinning solutions for auto, residential, and commercial buildings. Frontline Outfitters also handles vinyl wraps, spray-in bed liners, truck accessories, LED lighting, paint correction and detailing, and much more. Make sure Frontline Outfitters of Alexander City is your first call for tinning and aftermarket solutions. Call us today, 256-409-8100. The interstate is backed up this morning due to an accident. So you don't like sitting still on the interstate. Get the free ALGO traffic app. With ALGO, you'll have the information you need to avoid problems on your route, to work, to home, to the beach. Traffic backups, wrecks, lane closures, all with current info and live traffic camera feeds. Know before you go with ALGO traffic, ALGO traffic from the Alabama Department of Transportation. Get it today and arrive on time. Lake Mark Garage, located on Highway 280 in Jackson's Gap, has been serving our area since 1993. From routine maintenance such as oil changes, tune-ups, and rotating and balancing your tires, to transmission and engine repair, our trained and certified mechanics will get you back on the road better than before. Need a tow? With a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week towing service, Lake Mark Garage has local and long-range pickup. Trust your vehicle needs to the professionals at Lake Mark Garage. Call 256-825-6139, or better yet, stop in and see them today. Lake Mark Garage. Russell Building Supply and Home Center is just around the corner in a brand new convenient location with a wide selection of grills, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. The new store offers more home improvement items along with other helpful conveniences like a drive through lumber yard and our best rewards program, making it an ideal destination for do-it-yourselfers and professional contractors. Get ready for game day on the plains by stocking up on all your Auburn tailgating gear at Russell Building Supply and Home Center. EnviroCare is the standard in East Central Alabama for all your pest control and termite needs. EnviroCare exclusively offers Centricon termite colony elimination system that is the industry's most effective termite control to protect your home year round. The EnviroCare team service is also the standard for our customers. From eliminating home pests to superior termite control, nobody cares like EnviroCare. Serving Lake Martin and East Central Alabama.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz, halfway through the program. Uh, kind of all over the map this uh, today on, on the program, talking about different things. Uh, if you got something you want to add about uh, former Auburn linebacker Craig Ogletree passing away from complications of COVID at age 53. We talked about that in the first segment. Uh, Bobby Bowden uh, passing away at age 91 uh, this past weekend. Um, really, uh, Auburn and Florida State got into that rivalry in the 80s. Uh, Auburn uh, winning in 83, 84, 85, and 1990. I was at that 1990 game. It was crazy. Um, and that, that just uh, – that, that was the fumble ruski with Walter Tate. Uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, you know, that's the thing. Bobby Bowden was kind of that trickeration coach before – you know, he was the first to the to the dance for trying to pull a fast one. That's what made him so intriguing. And you knew Florida State was that kind of uh, cutting edge program that always had great athletes, and you never knew when they was going to pull one out of the out of the hat on you. And, uh, and and he did. Of course, he got Auburn, get the better of Auburn in '87, '88, and '89. Uh, those seasons and uh, in that 88 Sugar Bowl, we all know about that one uh, with Deion Sanders uh, knocking. You know, we'll say it on here. A little interference. He, he kind of ran over Lawyer Till, but, but no flag. But it was a very close football game, and they got the, the better of Auburn in that game. But there, there you go, just a back-and-forth type rival, uh, you know, that Auburn and Florida State became with one another, and um, it was some fun football. Where does he sit on, say, your top five coaches of your lifetime? And I'm going to add about five years to your lifetime. So let's just say the last 50 years, since 1970. Yeah. Who's the top five coaches? Mm. Well, I mean, obviously Bear Bryant uh, would be in there. Okay, yeah. I mean, how does he not make it? So uh, Bear Bryant, Bobby Bowden would be in there, although – how many national championships did he win? Just one. Just that one. Yes. But a lot, lots of, lots of wins, and really building that program. It is kind of shocking to hear, um, you know, looking back on it. Uh, Nick Saban, of course. Well, I mean, that's a that's an obvious one. Um, Tom Osborne would be one I Tom would put Osborne on there. Definitely goes up there with what he was able to build with Nebraska in the nineties. And I don't know really after that one. Um, I mean, does a Pat die? Does he does he find a way up there? Overall? And I'm talking about in our lifetime. Like in what like compared to Who else? Dabo Sweeney or somebody well, like that? I guess I'm I'm thinking more old school guys. I'm not yeah. really thinking well, I'm, I'm, I'm not really thinking about this this group. I mean, yeah, I mean, Urban you Meyer. Can, you can you could put Urban Meyer, you put Dabo Sweeney. I mean, there's a lot of those guys that here recently have have climbed the ladder. Yeah, I mean, if we want to do that, I would probably have to put them up there. So, but I guess I'm thinking Bobby Bowden, Bear Bryant, those Tom Osborne. You're talking about seven eighties and nineties, seventies, eighties, and nineties. Kind of where I'm, I mean, Steve Spurrier. Yeah, I think Steve Spurrier is he above Dabo and Urban Meyer? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he would. I mean, he's right there with them. And, and let me just kind of. I tell you, this something. may be odd for following. me to say, but I'd put Dabo in the top five. I thought he'd won two. Bobby Bowden won with Chris Winkie. Sure, that's right. He beat Virginia Tech. So um, that that was his second one. Uh, he also won with uh, Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward. Now here, the reason I brought up Pat Dye is because if you look at what let's say Bobby Bowden did with Florida State, that's what. Pat and I did with Auburn. He, he took a program in the SEC that had bottomed out and was at at the depths of you know where, and really kind of built them up to where he was at the end of his career. He rattled off three consecutive SEC titles and was always in the hunt. Never really got over the hunt for a national championship, uh, but but was always in the hunt. I'm not saying that he's equal to Dab or whatever, but for my mental of us growing up, I guess I. Well, he's the, be he's the best version from Auburn that right, we've had right, to throw right, in this list. Right, right. For sure. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, going back to Pat and the way that things kind of played its way out the last couple of years may throw a little um, asterisk Jimmy, on there. Would you put a Jimmy Johnson in there? Would you put – I would, but the only issue – Barry would, Switzer? Yeah, but, but their, their peaks were only there for a Barry, few years. Right, right. And, you know, and I think that – you know, when you start looking, and the reason that I bring Dabo up right now is I don't see him stopping anytime soon. 
And he's been coaching for what? This will be his 13th or 14th year at Clemson? Yeah. Yep. Ten plus years in a row with ten plus wins. They've won national championships. They been in the hunt multiple times. Brought a brought a team that is not perennially there. Right, so to let's there. just name the five. I okay, mean, well, well, who's your five? Ten ten coaches. So, all right, let me go back since I've kind of come back into the to the to the modern day era here. Uh, I'm going to put Bear Bryant and Nick Saban up there from from Alabama because I mean they're two of the best that's ever done it. Uh, I'm going to put Bobby Bowden up there because of what he meant to college football. And, you know, he's got the wins to back it yep. up. Only, one, only two national championships. But in the scheme of things, his his impact on the game was much was much bigger. Uh, I'm going to go Steve Spurrier. I think he changed the, the way Florida was looked at. He changed college football. He really was the guy that shifted – if you want to talk about these defenses with mm -hmm. Greg Ogletree and all that, when 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 the 90s turned, when we got into the decades of the 90s, it was Florida, man, and Florida kind of turning the turning that that knob on on offense and that fun and gun, high pace kind of deal, throw the ball around, you know. And I know he kind of it's kind of overshadowed because Florida always had great running backs, uh, but in the scheme of things. It was the fun and gun, and that's kind of what put him up there. And then I'm going to go Tom Osborne for what he did at Nebraska. I mean, those may have been some of the best college football teams of all time. Uh, I know some may may want to throw out Joe Paterno uh, for what he meant to Penn State and his iconic. And we kind of forget about Joe Paterno because of the, yeah. the tumultuous times that he ended his career on, which was very sad because – he spent the better part of 50-plus years at, at Penn State, and now there's really nothing. He, he gets looked down upon because of how it all ended. But that's what I'm going to go with. Spurrier, Osborne, uh, Bowden, Saban, and Brian. I'll take all of those, but I'll take Spurrier out and add Dabo in. Now, I think that – and the only reason I add him in is from what I expect to happen over the next 10 years, right. too. And I think that it's – it's a it's a good time to say that now he could be done next year and decide to retire. I doubt it. Just got too good does, of a program built. Does uh, Bob Stoops get mentioned in this conversation? He could, but would you put his Barry lack Switzer of winning? I would. Okay. No. Right. Lou Holtz is another one that would be brought up. Right. We gotta get a break. We'll come back. We'll keep this discussion going. Stay tuned. More the Auburn Blitz right after this. Marshall Tucker Band, Ashley McBride, Jordan Davis, and so many more. See you at Rock the South this Friday and Saturday. Get your tickets now at rockthesouth.com. Tails are wagging and pets are bragging about Zoom to Groom, Columbus, Phoenix City, and Smith Station. Zoom to Groom comes to you. It's mobile pet grooming from the comfort of your driveway. Schedule your appointment now online at zoomtogroom.net or by phone at 334-740-9909. At CNT Electric, our clients are our priority. For the safety and security of your family and home, our technicians are professionally trained, drug tested, background checked, and wear uniforms with name tags. We're proud to have served the Elk City, Dadeville, and Lake Martin areas for the past 10 years. Give us a call at 256-234-0007 for all your electrical service and repair needs. Or visit us on the web at www.cntelectricllc.com and spell out the word and. Attention all women who have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. In July 2018, a talcum manufacturer was ordered by a Missouri jury to pay $4.7 billion to 22 women who contracted ovarian cancer after use of baby powder and other talc products. The court upheld the record verdict, ruling that substantial evidence was submitted at trial of reprehensible conduct by the manufacturer. Don't wait. Make the call today. Please call 800-939-5681. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world. 
of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Now is the best time to sell your current home, as it's a seller's market, meaning that on average you can get up to 96% of your asking price. Who is the most aggressive and most experienced to help you sell your home? Hi, I'm Rhonda Gaskins, broker Century 21 Lake Area Realty in the Lake Martin area. We are getting a 96% return on our listing price, the sales price in this area. Call me today and let me go to work for you. 256-749-3644. Two nights, six amazing acts, one weekend at ATL Live, Friday, November 5th, George Strait and Eric Church with Caitlin Smith. Sing a song about the heartland. Saturday, November 6th, Metallica with Cage the Elephant and Greta Van Fleet. Tells our wagon and pets are bragging about Zoom to Groom. Columbus, Phoenix City, and Smith Station. Zoom to Groom comes to you. It's mobile pet grooming from the comfort of your driveway. Schedule your appointment now online at zoomtogroom.net or by phone at 334-740-9909. Lake Martin has a new car buying experience. It's the TR Group of Alex City on Cherokee Road. The TR Group has up to 100 late model vehicles to choose from and will not be beat on price, selection, or financing. With the TR Group, your selection and quality is easy and your good credit is rewarded. But we offer guaranteed financing on our inventory because your future is more important than your past. The TLR Group, Lake Martin's new standard in auto sales. Located at 814 Cherokee Road, Alex City, USA. Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. A couple segments left in today's show. Kind of going down this list uh, of all-time greatest coaches. I'm not going to go through all this, but looking at some of the ones uh, you mentioned, Lou Holtz, he came in at 23 on this list with a 249-132-7 and seven record. Um, I mean, Bo Schimbeckler is ahead of him at number 20 with 234 wins, 65 losses, and eight ties. And you come on up, I talked about – uh, a couple more guys that uh, stood out. Barry Switzer's at number 13 um, with 157-29 and four mark from 1973 to 1988. There's just a few more that, you know, I guess would be an honorable mention there. Uh, Vince Dooley. Uh, would you thought Vince Dooley would be in the top 25 coaches of all time? Uh, on this particular list, uh, he is 201 wins, 77 losses, and 10 ties, 1964 to 19. 88 so um yeah i think he's right there uh in the mix did win the national championship in 1980 um right. unfortunate for him that they didn't win more than that they had uh, really good chances the next two years with herschel but don't get over the hump so maybe you're you are held back and look you got to win championships and those numbers i think do mean something and uh yes getting the one's important but well, about not when you're comparing yourself to some that won three, four, five, and six. He didn't deserve to be up on the uh, Mount Rushmore of college football, but Pete Carroll, I mean, 83 and 18, really, USC was that team in the early 2000s. They haven't been anywhere near it since. No. And, it's kind uh, of odd that they aren't, too. It's still that right. program sitting out there that you feel like the right leader takes them back to the pinnacle quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, a guy that really kind of gets undersold because they've never really won anything uh, is Bill Snyder. Going to Kansas State tells you what kind of coach Bill Snyder was. Uh, win 215 games, 117 losses, but Kansas State is not a power in anything. And uh, just makes you wonder what in the world could have been if Bill Snyder would have landed at a program a top-tier program, top 10, top 15 program, what would he have been able to accomplish? Yeah, he's he's one that I do think that you don't have to look at championships and still know what you saw was great. Oh, no, well, he went away. Yeah. And they went back to the tank, and then 
came right back and he had them competing uh, at the top again. So, uh, you know, that's just a, a fun little deal there going back and forth. Some of those top college coaches, I don't think anybody's arguing with some of the ones that, that you and I put up there. Uh, they've kind of cemented themselves. And, you know, maybe, maybe Dabo Sweeney in this generation of coaches uh, is maybe the next guy to, to carry the uh, the baton for for this generation of coaches. Um, Lil, we talked about the defense a little bit with linebackers and how important that position is to Auburn this year and how much experience is coming back and uh, the depth that possibly could be there for Derrick Mason on that side of the ball. Um, we'll talk, talk a little bit about the offense now and, and some notes coming out of camp. Uh, Mike Bobo uh, is extremely excited about two things. Number one, the wide receivers are light years, he says, light years ahead of where they were in the spring. That's pretty important. I don't know where, whether to take that, how bad they were when the, the two of them showed up well, on campus. Well, not a lot and, of experience in that core either. Yeah, it's, it, there's not a lot. I mean, I know that we've got some uh, top-tier athletes there, but no guys that have really – had a lot of experience or a lot of catches so yeah I, I guess you would have expect us to be there but um I'm hoping that some of the positive statements that he's making about Bo Nick show up on the field this year and um the continual progression of um him getting more used to sitting in the pocket and feeding those receivers is, down the field could, I, could this be could Bo Nix be Jason Campbell this is his third offensive coordinator you remember yeah jason campbell went through the same day. Mm -hmm. you remember his first couple of years we were like ah oh, man this guy you know he was supposed to be this and that and all this and uh finally got a hold of bobby petrino and bobby petrino made jason campbell come alive uh led auburn to an sec championship really kind of kind of kind of was the player that year that everybody thought he could be could that happen to Bo Nix this year? You know, that's one of the things that you look at. Uh, his third offensive coordinator, third position coach uh, in his young in his career. Uh, this is what Mike Bobo said. He said to me, Bo, uh, with Bo, it's doing the little things over and over. And I'm talking about fundamentally. He said he had a really good day on day three. I thought he was sharp. Thought he was fundamentally sound. He was on balance in, po in the pocket when he threw, and he finished on balance. That's a lot of what we've been talking to him about, being on balance and getting his feet on the ground. You're going to be more consistent throwing the ball. That's something you brought up. That's We've talked about a lot on here. He's got to get better with his percentages as far as completion. Well, when you're throwing off balance and you're falling down and you're on the run, you're not going to be as good percentage-wise as if you're in there firm, taking that step, knowing where you're going with the football, reading your progressions, makes a lot of sense. Well, he's never been that guy. And for good reason, when you're the best athlete on the field and you're growing up in high school and you're allowed to use your feet, it becomes tougher to probably teach those guys that have had that much success doing it their own way that this way is not going to work for you. And, and here's the thing I'll say about Bo Nix in comparison to Jason uh, Campbell. Bo Nix has had his moments. Oh, he has. Uh, Jason didn't have a whole lot of moments. He was about as mediocre as mediocre could be not leading into that last. Yep. But Bo's had some moments where – And right, Brent, Al Borges just had a lot. All of that, that athleticism has worked out for him. Right. But the issue is when you get against these top-tier defenses on the road in hostile environments and a few things go against you and – all of those progressions don't t tend to work out. That's the reason I feel like that um, some, someone like Bobo staying, and I, it's not just Bobo. I think Harson can coach that position as well as oh, Bobo he can. can. He can. And just, you know, making sure that when you're watching it and you're seeing it, because a lot of this is self-inflicted wounds. You can throw all the blame on that offensive front that you would like to, but – if you watched him, but you it sat there. You got a little bit better line. Yeah, but he'd take off. It wouldn't matter if if there was just a semblance of a little bit of pressure on him. He would be out of the pocket. Last year, that can't happen, and you make the step uh, to one of the better quarterbacks in the league. We'll talk about this when we come back from break. But I do want to get this quote out there. Bobo said, "I've been extremely impressed with how 
hard this young man works, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's running the decks in the summer in the stadium, how he prepares for each meeting, coming in beforehand with offensive staff. I walk around the corner of my office and he's already sitting there constantly watching film, getting ready for the meeting, preparing the questions that he asks. He leaves no stone unturned. His work ethic is number one. And then he's the ultimate competitor. He wants to win at everything, not just football. Well, what does that say about that guy? We'll talk about that when we come back. It's what we've already known about him. Right. You still have to even take some of those things. All of those are things that we've known about him and I think he's had from day one. Right. But not all that helps you become a Heisman Trophy winning oh, quarterback. Oh, no, no, but it helps to have that. It t- goes back yeah, to Yeah, he's got about. all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll finish it up when we come back. Stay tuned. More of the Auburn Blitz right after this. Grain and Leaf, located at 6068 Highway 63 South, is Lake Martin's premier boutique-style bottle shop with a unique array of sophistication for everyone. Appropriately named for its exclusive selection of top spirits, wine, and craft beer, Grain and Leaf also has a number of fine cigars for you to choose from. They also carry the full line of Hornsby Farms assorted jellies and pottery. Open 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday and noon to 5 on Sundays, Grain and Leaf is your premier shop in the Lake Martin area. Folks around these parts have known for a long time that Walls Tire, just a mile past the bridge on Highway 280, is your number one stop for automotive service and repair. At Walls Tire, you'll always find quality service at a fair price on everything from AC, name brand tires, big or small repairs, routine maintenance, towing, and more. When your car or truck needs to run right, there's one place in the area to go, conveniently located and easy to find. Walls Tire, just a mile past the bridge on Highway 280. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. EnviroCare is the standard in East Central Alabama for all your pest control and termite needs. EnviroCare exclusively offers Centricon termite colony elimination system that is the industry's most effective termite control to protect your home year round. The EnviroCare team's service is also the standard for our customers. From eliminating home pests to superior termite control, nobody cares like EnviroCare. Serving Lake Martin and East Central Alabama. Sign Source is your local vendor for commercial and residential sign manufacturing and installation. We offer all kinds of lighted and non-lighted signage from retail signs, LED message centers, event banners, vehicle wraps, the whole spectrum. We also offer service and repair on existing signs as well as retrofitting to LED or installation of outsourced signage. We have the knowledge necessary to fulfill all of your signage needs in the short or long term. Visit SignSourceNow.com to get started. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA weekly show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Need that boost to get you started in the morning or help get you through a long day at the office? Alex City Nutrition is your answer. Alex City Nutrition, located on 2nd Broad Street in downtown Alex City, offers meal replacement shakes, post-workout shakes, extreme rebuild products, and a vast array of loaded teas that offer focus, energy, and build up your immunity and overall health. Want to buy in bulk? We now offer your favorite flavors by the gallon. Come by Alex City Nutrition today or call 256-496-8284 to begin your journey to great health. Playing with rockets is great when you're a kid. But when it's time to get a mortgage, you quickly realize that a rocket is complicated and expensive. It's best to work with an independent mortgage broker instead. They're dedicated to getting you a home loan faster and more affordably. And they're more than just mortgage experts. They live right in your own neighborhood, so you don't have to go it alone. For mortgages that are faster, easier, and more affordable, find a local independent mortgage broker near you. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. 
Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz final segment of the program. Uh, Jim said, Bo knows football, Bo knows sweet tea, Bo knows Bo Jangles, Bo knows if you ain't got an O-line, you better run. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, Brent said, but does Bo know Bo? Uh, good question. You know, he needs to know what his strengths are and, uh, and, and like you said, what can translate over. Um, I think that – I'll put it this way. He's a three-year – he'll be a three-year starter this year. Those are invaluable with skill sets like Bo Nix. Now, you can have a three-year starter like – I hate to be this way, but Nick Starkle. I mean, who cares? I mean, Nick Starkle could have floated from Texas A&M to Arkansas to Timbuktu and it wouldn't have mattered. He was still going to be mediocre. But we all know the potential of Bo Nix and – can he make those adjustments to take him to the next level? That's what everybody's going to be watching this year. Well, we'll see, and you don't even have to watch. You can look at the stat line, and the top-tier quarterbacks are completing in the college game 70%. at a 70-plus percent ratio, right. and Bo Nix has been closer to 50 than 70. Uh, you can't make it Not in today's game games, because a lot, of, a lot of those completions are gimmies in, in any of these systems at this point in time. So um, – we, I, I told you this during the break, the the last two Heisman Trophy winners w had no higher acclaim coming out of high school than the two, th than Bo Nix. Um, so, what does that mean? Doesn't mean a darn thing. Right. All it means is you've got a chance, and uh, if the chance is given to you to change offensive philosophies and to have better quarterback and coach, which is what we're all hoping for. I think we'll know, but I think we'll know pretty quick. You can watch him and see how we're playing. And not all the blame, again, can go towards the offensive line. As long as we keep giving that pass, we're going to keep getting what we get. No, no, no doubt. I think a lot of it's system, scheme. Oh, well, and, and I didn't read all of Mike Bobo's um, quotes, but he talked about that. He, he said it's there's a lot to do with scheme, but you got to do the little things right. Mm -hmm. Scheme's part of it, but the fundamentals are – as big, if not bigger, part of it uh, before you can execute that. But up. changing fundamentals when the overall passing schemes have changed right. are a lot easier than the same. Look, we've all watched that passing scheme with Gus Malzahn. How many of those same pass patterns have we seen time and time again? They may be called something different nothing? with a different offense I ain't coordinator. See it anymore. Yeah, I, know. I don't know what's going to happen this year. But you're happy about I that? I don't have to watch that crap no more. I mean, and look, and I know somebody listening to go, well, hold on a minute. You know, Gus, he didn't change. It worked at one point in time, and it was good. But when when somebody across the way figures you out, you got to do something different. You can't continue to do the same thing over and over and expect different results. That's the definition of insanity. And sometimes I think that's where Gus Malzahn was with his lack of confidence with his assistant coaches, always paranoid that somebody was out to get him, somebody was trying to undercut him. It, it was just probably best for everybody involved for that, for that relationship to part. The only bad part about that was is Auburn got suckered in. And when I say Auburn, the leadership at the time got suckered in to signing that contract that they signed with him. And he walked away with a cool $22 million and didn't have to scratch to get it. Didn't have to scratch nothing. He just walked away. He was fired. Hey, no wonder he was dancing in the locker room at, get, um, at Mississippi State. Heck, I'd been dancing too. I'd been whatever, you know, the – spinning around on the ground, moonwalking, whatever you want to call it, knowing that I'm about to cash a $22 million check and I don't have to lift a finger again. That's a good old American way, right? It is in coaching. It's the best job on the planet because I don't know of any other job 
where you can fail at your profession and go and walk away and get that kind of money outside of a CEO with a golden parachute. Right? Yeah, true. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, you need to go on to the house, but I'm going to pay you $22 million to go there. Yes, sir. I'll see you later. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of Auburn Blitz. We'll be back with you tomorrow, same time, same place. For Randy Lee, I'm Britt Pritchard saying we've enjoyed it. We hope you have. See you tomorrow.